Hey guys, this is once again exam help. Um, today I'm just going to go over genetic diversity. So basically, I'm going to start off. So what is genetic diversity? Well, we learned from previous videos that genetic diversity is the um, it's just the number of alleles that all members of a species possess. So a certain species could have a hundred different alleles for the same gene, but then another uh, species can only have two alleles for the same gene. So this results in either a wider or a smaller range of genetic diversity. And we're just going to have a look at some quick ways that genetic diversity can be reduced in some way. So we're going to start off talking about selective breeding. So selective breeding, most of us have come across selective breeding in some respect. So for example, um, it can be breeding dogs, uh, certain breeds. Um, for example, you might want a Labrador or you might want a Jack Russell. So selective breeding has uh, narrowed down certain aspects of um, breeds of dog so that you can get all these different breeds that are available. So um, this is selective breeding can be called artificial selection because it's kind of it's selecting certain uh, alleles, but we do this artificially. It's not natural at all in any way. So how does selective breeding work? Well, first we get the parent, um, and we find a parent with particular desired characteristic. So I'm going to give an example of cattle. If we want a cat, if we want cattle to breed for meat, for example, we're going to want a cow with as much meat as possible on it. So what people did is they got, uh, they found a particular cattle with a lot of meat on, and they found a mother and a father pair of this. And then they both have a lot of meat. And then, through generations, there's going to be more and more uh, meat on the cow because of um, these alleles, these desired alleles, which provide the specific phenotype, which is the uh, properties that an allele gives. Um, the parents with these alleles will pass them on and then through generations it'll get greater and greater so for an example of this a result is the Belgian blue this is uh, the Belgian blue cattle and it's bred as you can tell for meat so as you can see it's got a lot of meat on it so obviously through generation generations they picked particular cattle to breed from which have a lot of meat. So this is a result of selective breeding. And then we move on to the founder effect. And this is the uh, this is when a few individuals from a large population will colonize a new region. So what happens is I'll uh, draw you a quick diagram. So how does this work? So imagine here we've got a big land mass here this square and then populating this is a few people some people have the phen uh, the uh, genotype red there and some have blue so some ha they have different alleles one has the red one one has the blue one so it doesn't matter what allele it is they just have a particular allele but we can see here that the blue ones are obviously in the minority. There's only three of them, but seven of the reds. So, obviously, there's only 30% that have the blue allele here. But then, imagine if they colonize the island here. So this is my little island. So imagine if they colonize that. So what's happened is three of the original 10 
have moved over to this little island here. As you can see, two of the blue ones have moved, but one of the red one has. So, from the original 30% having the blue allele, now 66.7% have the blue allele on the island. So, it's not particularly representative of the larger population. The new population that develops will therefore show uh, a less representative uh, uh, phenotype. So some have, so more have the blue allele than before, but it could be different. We could only have red uh, that come over. This reduces genetic diversity because we don't have a very large population, do we? So this reduces genetic variation. In the end, what could happen is because this uh, this uh, genetic diversity may be completely different from this one, so we might have completely different alleles on this one. So over time, we may actually see a completely different species being produced over here, completely different to them. So if they were to go back, then they might not even be able to mate with each other. To to produce fertile offspring because they may be a new species. This can be seen with like volcanic er um, eruptions then producing uh, volcanic islands rising out of the sea. Then people may, so individuals of any species, may colonize these islands and give rise to completely new species. That, that does actually happen. So that is the founder effect. So we're going to move on to genetic bottlenecking and this is where populations of a species um, may experience a dramatic drop in their numbers. This can be due to uh, natural disasters or even human event, human controlled events. Um, few survivors, they may possess such alleles that might actually be a lot smaller in variety than the original population. So I'll draw you a little diagram for this. So here I've drawn out a quick diagram. So as you can see, we've got many different alleles. So the colors represent alleles and the circles represent people. So we've got red, we've got blue, we've got green, brown, yellow, black. So we've got plenty of different alleles. So say if there was a volcanic eruption, there's a volcano over here. I'll draw a quick volcano. There's a volcano over here and it erupts everywhere. So if it erupts everywhere, spewing molten rock about everywhere, and lava, and imagine that. Then this might reduce the numbers dramatically. So then, as you can see, the volcanic eruption has left us with a much smaller uh, population and this wasn't this isn't anything like the original population we've got 40% red 20% blue 20% green 20% brown so when these when they all reproduce it'll give a representative population of this new population but it wouldn't be representative of the original population and as we can see the number of alleles has also decreased so we had we had plenty of other colours. So this means that genetic diversity also decreases as a result of this. So that was genetic diversity, and the three I went over, uh, three ways that genetic diversity can be reduced are selective breeding, the founder effect, and genetic bottlenecks. So the selective breeding being artificial selection, founder effect is where few individuals colonize uh, a new region and genetic bottlenecking being the reduction of uh, population size due to natural disasters or interference by man. These all reduce genetic diversity. Thank you for watching. That was exam help. I hope that helped. Thank you for watching.